Okay, what's up, invested entities of all types? I'm assuming we're mostly uh, type three and four here, at least myself. I, I, I probably a type four. I, mean, I, I don't even know what a type three would be, but uh, yeah, no, uh, no investiture here for me quite yet. But uh, this is Stephen, and welcome to another Brandon Sanderson Rhythm of War pre-release chapter episode. We're covering chapter fifteen. Today, if you like Phantology, check us out at www.phantologybooks.com for our full catalog and consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash phantologybooks. And let's get to it. So in this chapter, we learn a little bit about Logic Spren. So Logic Spren were kind of the teaser from Navani's last lecture. And now we learn that they are something that they didn't know how to use for a while, and now they've in, in recent advancements have kind of been very important with these logic spren. And I just kind of love how advanced this foreign magical technology is. It totally makes sense in terms of what the world is, and it's awesome at the same time because it's magic. But it's like if this, if Roshar really did develop, this is how they would use magic for technology, and this is the forefront of it. We're, uh, we speculated on our Discord that this is how computers are going to be used in the future. So once we get up to like Mistborn's era three, which I think Sanderson said he wanted to have like an 80s spy type thing. Once we get up to there and then up to, to era four is the space full on crossover with the whole Cosmere from my understanding. So once we get to that point, then I think we're doing logic spread and we're doing computers and we're just throwing it all like Sanderson is just going for it all at that point. So getting into the actual meat of the chapter, days are actually passing here. The first few chapters, the first 14 plus chapters, including the prologue. Well, the prologue was before the first 14 chapters. We're all on the first day or two. And now we're 10 days later when Kaladin promised Dalinar that he would have his decision and also the whole thing with Yunfa, the honor spread was uh, w- that was ten days as well. So now we're at that point, and Kaladin has officially stepped down and moved on. We don't really know what it is yet he's doing, but they had a meeting that promoted Sigzil and Scar, not Teft. Curiously, I I don't know. Like I might have put Teft in charge of training these guys he seems like he's kind of the natural choice but okay we're going with sigzil and scar not sure what happened there yeah we're getting a comment here uh, i guess tept will be the the new high marshal but that hasn't been announced yet so we assume he'll get promoted at some point seal sees seal sees navani with a new fabrial ship drawing this is kind of a, a little line here that's not important to the plot of the chapter but i think hints at a new ship fabriel coming up i think we're replacing the barge barge four was fun but i guess we're doing a proper airship with sails and everything so are we going full on steampunk i kind of hope not steampunk isn't really my favorite it's it's not my favorite genre of fantasy but if we have to do it i guess i'll accept it Kaladin kind of has nothing to do right now, which is really bad for depression. If you're depressed, you definitely, I mean, one thing that's going to help is, is having something that you're actively working towards with nothing going on. That's not a good recipe for dealing with depression. He is able to kind of deal with it a little bit here. And so he says, I'm going to go seek out Zale. He, he has a little bit of a plan. Like he might be wanting to join the Ardentia. We'll see what happens in a second. And I like this line from Seal as they're talking where she says, actually, everything is a fragment of divinity. And I guess when I dissed everyone in our intro about saying that you guys were level four or type two invested entities, maybe we're all at least type three because we're all fragments of divinity. Thank you, Sil. Before he gets to Zale, he looks into the farming efforts and there's been some advancements thanks to Relaine. And they discover that using the natural rhythms of Roshar by playing a drum when there is a gemstone, a, a favorable gemstone nearby, the plants are, the rock buds 
are helping them grow. And Relaine says, yeah, you're making some progress, but you still can't quite hear all of the rhythms, the natural rhythms of Roshar. I wonder if there's any tie in here to the tone that Navani was hearing when Dalinar opened up the perpendicularity. Like, was she hearing the natural tone there? And is that going to be important? I guess we'll see. Kaladin talks to Relaine and says, hey, I got you your bond. I talked to Yunfa and, and he's in. And Kaladin has a terrible diplomacy tact here because he says, well, okay, actually I forced him to do it, but you should be happy because what can you really expect? You know, and this is like just a little racist at least, <laughs> right? And Kaladin doesn't really understand. And Relaine has a nice response here where he says, you know, I'm not going to take what I can get. I'll hold out for something that's really worth it. And I like that Kaladin's able to kind of reconsider here a little bit and still doesn't quite understand because he's like, well, as a soldier or something, you just have to, you know, do the thing, even if it's not exactly what you want. But this is a nice little exchange. And I think it's it's fairly open-minded and, and I like it. So I like Relaine for being strong here, not just accepting that he has to make this bond that's not exactly what he wants. Like he deserves to get the uh, get the spren bond that is, you know, at the, the full, right? He doesn't want to be forced into it. So this is nice. Relaine can't access Stormlight. So my question is, can only can listeners only use void light? Is Stormlight not accessible to them somehow? And we got some of this with the Venley and her chapter. And I don't remember all of the details here, but I feel like we're going to get this fleshed out more. Like this was just a small thing where it's like, oh, by the way, I can't access Stormlight still for some reason. So interesting. And I talked about the pure tones of Roshar. That was nice. So, okay. So Kaladin finally gets to Zale. Actually, before I do that, let me take another comment here on YouTube. So, Honor's path had sails underneath that. Why does it look strange to him? Are all just nautical stuff is strange to Al Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Why does it look strange? Well, he said the sails were on the wrong side of the ship. So it's like the sails are underneath the ship was what he was saying in Sil's representation. Lane will bond with your theory. Okay. That's another fun theory. I like that one. And Navani's hearing ancient Roshar magic that, okay, sure. All right, so we got some theories here. Thanks for those comments. Okay, so back. Okay, so Kaladin makes gets it. Uh, okay, so Kaladin gets to Zale. He's at the edge of the plateau, in, in the uh, washer, the clothes washing area, and he has all these brightly colored scarves around him. And he's got the rope rope belt, which is perfect if you know anything about Warbreaker. If you haven't read War, Warbreaker, by the way, you might want to. I'm probably going to spoil some of Warbreaker, so. Might want to tune off and, and read that. And you probably want to, if you're deep into Cosmo or lore, I'm assuming you've read Warbreaker already. So Zayo obviously has heightened senses and maybe even more than that. And I'll talk about that in a second. So Kaladin comes up to him and Zayo senses him right away. It's, it parallels Mraze when Shallan was kind of sneaking up on him a little bit. So we assume that Mraze has something here as well. They're both... Awakeners, uh, uh, what level is this? Like the fifth or something like that. So, Kaladin's coming up to Zale because he wants to be a ardent swordmaster. He sees this as a potential path for him, like a, a way to still have a purpose. Come on, Kaladin. I mean, you can go a little bit more than just retiring into the Ardentia. But at this point, that's where he's going. And I think Zale does a good job of talking him out of it. And they start to get into this fight and. He questions him and says, why do you fight? And I think this conversation is getting at Kaladin's next oath here. And this is something that I'm looking forward to getting later in this book. And I think this is a good lead into it. Kaladin doesn't, Kaladin doesn't have a great answer for it. They start to talk about the Almighty a little bit. Kaladin has a good line where he just says, eh, I just want to kind of keep my head down. I'll let other people worry about those types of discussions. So Kaladin's really down on himself. And I think he needs to I think this book is where we're going to see him really kind of take a step up and realize that he can be the the leader of not you know not just this small group of windrunners but he can definitely take a step up in you know Cosmere level events and I don't think he's just going to retire into the Ardents. Kaladin is getting owned by Zale in this fight 
And this is a good kind of mirror to his fight with Lizian, I thought, because same kind of thing where he's getting strangled at the end. There's a good line here where from Sill where he says, hey, we're getting owned by a guy wielding something from Adolin's sock drawer. That was a nice little funny bit from Sill. Sometimes Sill's humor, I'm like, eh, yeah, I don't know. It's a little cheesy, but there were some good lines in this one. So Zale talks then about, they kind of take a break from the, the, the fight a little bit, and they're talking about Azure. And Zale says, well, I wouldn't hold my breaths, plural, funny because I don't know that she's really going to be able to get through cultivations perpendicularity very well, which is at the horn eater peaks, because now we know that it's not quite as safe to pass through it. This was the typical way people were going through, but with the fused awakened, it's not as safe. So I'm sure we'll see Azure at some point, but maybe in a different, I mean, I'm assuming it will be when Adolin and Shalon make their mission over into Shadesmar, right? But uh, there's a lot still to be seen about how we're going to navigate Shadesmar these days. I think it's cool to see the whole process of awakening through Kaladin, who doesn't get it at all. And you're just seeing like, oh, Zale is touching the cloth and it's changing colors and he's like touching them one by one. And as someone who's read Warbreaker, it's great, right? But otherwise, Kaladin's like, what the heck is going on here? I know it's some kind of magic. And he asks Zale and he actually gets answers. And this is what I want to talk about for the rest of this stream. So we're starting to answer the question of how different forms of investiture are used in different planets. And Zale Vasher is a good way to start this discussion because he can access Stormlight. This is confirmed. And there's actually a little tidbit that I want to read. So this is a question that Brad uh, Sanderson was asked. He says, well, the question says, with most, with most magic systems, you've said that you need some sort of gap in your soul for the investiture to get in. On Nalthus, there's obviously a bit of that, that they can, a bit of it that they can give away, talking about the process of, of being returned. Is that how Vasher is able to get Stormlight? And Sanderson said, uh, yes, that is how. So that's how a returned or one of the type two invested entities as Basher is going to explain later on. That's how he's able to access Stormlight. But there's also a word of Brandon that says he cannot, or he hasn't yet figured out how to use Stormlight to awaken. But he's also using nonverbal commands to awaken this stuff in this converse, in this fight with Kaladin. So is he like 10th heightening God King level here? And how has he done that? He's, he just got a ton of breaths. Or is he able to take in the stormlight and turn it into breaths somehow, but then not actually use the stormlight in your traditional way? That's kind of what I'm thinking. But Brando said specifically that he hasn't used stormlight. He hasn't figured out how to use stormlight to awaken. So interesting. And he hasn't had made the full conversion yet. And this ties in perfectly to what we're talking about with Marais and Shalon. And I think a couple chapters ago, whenever that was interesting. So a nice combo of both abilities. And I think we're getting more hints. I mean, these aren't even hints. This is pretty blatant. We do go kind of back, segue back into the conversation with Kaladin wanting to join the Ardentia. Zale says, no, you can't join until you hate the fight because you'll just go back into it and you're not there. This is not for you. And then Kaladin finally says, okay, give me some answers. And Zale says, well, I'm not like wit slash dust. He calls him dust, I think, which was an early name that Sando was planning on giving to wit, but he has kind of gone away from it. But I guess Zale knows him as dust a little bit. And he also calls him an a-hole, which was funny. <laughs> Sanderson doesn't swear very much in his books, but this was a fairly appropriate uh, use of this because wit can be quite maddening with his lack of answers. And Zale kind of calls him out for it. I like that Vasher continues to be a very straightforward guy. That was kind of always how he was characterized in Warbreaker. Now he tells us about type two invested entities, which is a soul that dies when it's too invested and therefore comes back. It's a cognitive shadow type of thing. He names off a few examples. He says Zeth is one. The, the Heralds are one. The Fused are one. There's some others from Warbreaker that are very similar. And then he says, actually, Sill is a type one, 
which is like a live source of power, just pure power. So type two invested entities, Kaladin wants to kill these guys because these are the fused. Zale says, well, you'll need a really powerful weapon to unmake this connection to Odium for the fuse because they've been around for millennia. And he says, those weapons are really dangerous from my experienced uh, Nightblood. So you might want to think about that a little bit more. And then the final thing we get from him is that he says, she is taking our memories and turning us into these pure forces of intent. And we're basically spread masquerading as men. And that's why you get the fuse that are becoming these just raw forces of nature. And the speculation is that she is endowment. Zale doesn't specifically, specifically answer this question, but it makes sense because she is directly returning them as cognitive shadows on Nalthus and takes their memories. So I don't really see how it could be anyone else. It wasn't super obvious to me at first, but now that we think about it a little, now that I've thought about it a little bit more, like, yeah, it's, it's gotta be right. So as I close, how does this relate to the heralds exactly? Because the type two guys, the cognitive shadows are they've died and then their souls are split from their bodies and they're put back together like back and forth all the time but the heralds from my understanding they've literally been transported from roshar to braze back and forth with no separation of their souls and bodies so how does this like there's some disconnect here maybe it's more of a not quite as literal of a separation and still by traveling back and forth they're achieving the same like rendering of the soul but or, or sundering of the soul or whatever that whatever that word is. But that's my speculation. If you have any ideas there on any on this or any other theories, please hop on our Discord and let us know. We have a channel that is just dedicated to Rhythm of War hype and spoiler tag some stuff there. Let us know what you think, where this is, where the book's going, what you think about any of these theories. We're getting a lot of like, pretty big things here. More questions are being asked than are being answered, unfortunately but there's a lot to talk about. So looking forward to Rhythm of War. We are almost at a month now, November 19th. So just over a month, we've got like four or five more weeks of chapters coming out and then we're into it. So I'm pumped. Hope you are. Thanks for listening. Again, con consider supporting Phantology at Patreon slash Phantology Books and find more of us at www.phantologybooks.com. All right, see everyone next time.